Hi everyone, I'm Shinjinji and welcome to a new episode of the 2D Character Controller series. In this episode we are going to make use of the new input system to enable input from multiple devices. Select Window, Package Manager and be sure to be in the Unity Registry section. Write Input in the search box and it will pop up right away. Select Install and when finished you'll be asked to restart Unity. Select Yes and wait for Unity to restart. In the Assets folder create a new one named Settings and another one named Input. In here we will create a new Input Actions asset which is in charge of storing the type of input we want our game to handle. Name it Player Input Actions and open it. Create a new action map named Gameplay. It will group out all the actions that are related to the gameplay. Then rename the existing action to Move. Change the action type to Value since we want a value type to be returned and specify the value type in the control type making it a vector too. Click on the arrow near the name to be able to select bindings for the action. Delete the current one and from the plus icon select Add Up Down Left Right Composite. Get rid of the up and down since we won't be using them. Select the left binding, choose Path and then listen to be able to capture the input of the device you are trying to bind, which in this case will be the A button of the keyboard. Do the same thing for the right binding, this time selecting the D button of the keyboard, and rename the bindings to Keyboard Keys. Then click on the plus icon of the Move action to add another binding, this time choosing the Add Binding option, Make sure to have your gamepad connected to Unity and listen for the left stick input. We are done with the movement. Create a new action and name it Jump. You can leave the action type as it is since Button will return a bool representing the press state. Click on Binding, then Path and listen for the Space button on the keyboard. Then add another binding this time for the gamepad self button, which will be A on the Xbox controller and X on the PlayStation 1. Make sure to save the asset. You can also turn the autosave option if you want. Close the input actions UI and with the player input actions asset selected, click on the generate C sharp class checkbox and hit apply. A new c -sharp class will be created in the same location of the player input actions asset. This will contain a reference to all the informations needed to access input data from code. It's time to make use of the newly generated c -sharp class. Go into scripts, controllers and open the player controller. Let's create a private instance of the Player Input Actions class, which we'll be using to access input data. On the onEnable method, we will create a new instance and enable the Gameplay Action Map. You may have more than one action map in your game, so be sure to always activate the one you need to use. Then we'll listen to the Jump Started event to know when a jump has been requested, and we will keep track of it with a private pool named is jumping, which will be set to true when the input is started. We also need a way to set when the input is no longer pressed. We can do so by listening to the console event of the jump action, this time setting the is jumping variable to false. On disable instead, we make sure to disable the action map, stop listening to the jump events and set the player input actions instance to null, so that the memory can be freed. What remains to be done in this script is to return the isJumping variable in the retrieveJumpInput method, 
and in retrieve move input we will use the move action to retrieve the x component of the vector 2. Since the is jumping variable now implicitly tells us when we are holding the jump button, we no longer need the retrieve jump old input method. We can get rid of it, just make sure to delete it from the interface and all other classes that were implementing it. Going back to Unity, you will see two errors in the console, indicating that the jump script is using the no longer present retrieve jump old input method. Click on one of the errors and you will be directed to the line where the error occurs. Changing the jump script to use the retrieve jump input method will solve the issue. You can finally test the input to see if it works with your keyboard and controller. At this point, you will notice that if you keep the jump button pressed, the character keeps on jumping, both on the ground and on the wall. This can be easily solved by adding a variable that keeps the state of the button press. We'll call this variable is jump reset. At the start of the script, we'll set it to true so that the character is able to jump. Remove the OR operator from the assignment because we no longer need to store the jump request, since the method now returns if one has been requested or not. We'll perform the jump when one is requested, but only if the jump button has been reset. Inside the if statement, we'll set the isJumpReset variable to false, because we are now pressing the button. Then we separate the check for the jump not being requested from the jump buffer and make its own check. If we are not pressing the jump button, we want to set back the isJumpReset variable to true. And that's it for the jump. Go back to Unity and test it out. You'll see that keeping the jump button pressed no longer triggers a jump. But this only works for the ground jump and not the wall jump. So let's fix that too. Open the wall interactor script, and like we've done with the jump script, create a bool variable named isJumpReset. To keep track of the jump button being pressed, set it to true at the start of the script. Remove the OR operator from the assignment, and we will only perform a wall jump if one is being requested and if the jump button has been reset. If we are not pressing the jump button, will set the isJumpReset variable to true, whereas if we are performing one, we'll set it to false. To make sure that we don't detect the jump press from the ground, we'll set the isJumpReset variable to false when touching a wall. Going back to Unity and testing it out, you will see that if you jump from the ground, the character will jump immediately when touching the wall. This happens because we only check for the jump being pressed if we are on the wall and not on the ground, not allowing for the jump request variable to be properly set. What you need to do is to cut the condition from the update loop and copy it before the wall jump check, making sure to nest the condition. This will ensure that a wall jump will only be executed if we are on the wall and not on the ground allowing the desired jump to be properly set even when we are not on a wall. Try it now and the wall jump reset should work. If you only use the keyboard, you might think that everything worked fine, but as soon as you pick up your controller and try to wall jump, strange behaviors will appear. The reason why this happens has to do with the values returned by the controller compared to the keyboard and the actual method we use to verify in which direction we are pointing to. When it comes down to the keyboard, the values returned are minus one if we are pointing to the left and one if we are pointing to the right. That's because each key on the keyboard is bound to a direction, whereas when it comes down to the controller, it's really hard to point exactly to the left or to the right, and so, the values are actually slightly less or something between the values that the keyboard returns. So when we do compare the normal of the wall, which is going to be 1 or minus 1 for flat walls, the check with the controller fails. 
This is solved by checking for just the sign both on the wall jump and on the wall stick checks. And if you try it now, the wall climb works perfectly. But if you instead try to wall bounce by not pointing to any direction, when jumping on the right wall the sign of zero will be positive and the check will think that you are actually pointing to the right. So to be sure that when not pointing to any direction the condition is met, put the check for a value of zero first. Try it now and the wall bounce will work. There is just one last thing to fix for this episode, and it has to do with the wall stick counter. If we go inside the on wall and not on ground check and put a debug.log for the wall stick counter, we'll be able to see that the counter goes down even if we are not pressing anything. This is similar to what was happening before with zero being returned as a positive sign. To avoid that, just check that the input from the controller is not equal to zero. This will make sure that the counter goes down only if we are pressing the opposite direction from the wall and will discard any value when the input is not pressed. This is all for this video. Comment down below if you have any questions and remember to subscribe to follow the 2D character controller series and all other contents that will be coming in the future.